Good morning, and welcome to Novatech's ongoing training series. I'm Larry Mohumer. In today's course, we were going to talk about how the cellular modem is an ideal enablement platform for IoT solutions, and how it can be a driver for over a dozen different revenue sources for your company. And for your customer, it can also provide them with an excellent base for their IoT applications. Just a bit about Novatech. As the slide mentions, our mission is to help customers deploy their IoT solutions in many ways, which may include providing flexible financial payment options, providing world-class pre- and post-technical sales assistance, and even in some cases, providing logistical services to help ease the burden of deployment. We of course do this to make money, but we also do it to fulfill a vision of helping customers figure out the complex world of IoT and how to use it to better their business. When you see this slide, it might be a little amazing. Yes, there really are 16, probably more, different revenue sources that a modem sale can enable. And that's not including the actual sale of the modem itself. Now, to be realistic, not all of these may be available to each situation, and there's a strong chance many of them may actually be outside of the scope of work for your organization, and you may have to work with a partner on it. However, the idea of this presentation was to help you start thinking beyond the box when it comes to selling modems. Start thinking about how you could possibly add three, five, even 10 different revenue sources for each modem sale. To start, for many applications, the site of the modem is only a link between what goes on locally at the site and for the rest of the world via the internet. In this situation, the private radio hub would be linked to the cellular modem, likely via an ethernet or a serial cable, and would transmit information that is gathered locally, at a, uh, locally to a remote site. Point-to-point -point radio refers to when two endpoints of radio communication, very similar back when you were a kid using two, two cans with a piece of a string in the middle. And it's often used to gather date, data from a remote site on the same property as the modem. A hub and spoke model is a little different because it refers to communication where there is one main hub, often connected directly to the modem itself, and there are multiple points out in the field, just very similar to how the spokes come back to the same spot on a bicycle wheel. The idea here, again, is to provide communication locally. So the modem is an enabler for this application to come back to the rest of the world. I think most people understand what barcodes do. All you have to do is go down to your local store or supermarket to see them in action. Information is stored on that barcode and is retrieved. And that could be anything from the price of the product to a description. It is then read into a system, in this case, allowing you to check out of the grocery store. Barcodes are very limited, as there's only so much information they can store, and they're not powered in the same way as other technologies. And that's where RFID comes in. Think of them as a barcode on steroids. Very similar to the grocery store, there is a reader that actually scans the tag, or reads the tag in this, in this case. That's quite that simple. It can be anything from retail to logistics to tracking children in playgrounds, but the idea is that it takes the information and allows it to be actioned upon. The actual tag are the parts that are read, and if you've ever done any kind of a walking, running, or biking race, you've probably seen these in action when dozens or hundreds or even thousands of runners go past a point. They're all checked in at the starting gate by RFID technology. Finally, sometimes you might need the signal to go a bit further, so an external antenna is often beneficial for many different applications. When you're selling a modem, think about what information has to be gathered locally and transmitted back to a remote location. Along with private radio, RFID might be a good choice. I've long been in the belief that it's only a matter of time before the first printer company just gives away the home printer and accepts the revenue from the high margin sales of ink. While it's not quite the same with modems, I think many accessories can and should be sold with each modem and they're often a great way uh, to provide value for your customer and revenue for you. Brackets are often used to help fa faster devices, fasten devices, sorry, to walls and poles, which allows them to better, also to better fit into cabinets and even sometimes to add on things like batteries. So much for the idea of a wireless society, I think I have more cables around my house than ever before. And it's no different with modems, anything from power cables to connectivity cables to antenna cables, they're often a great add-on to each sale. Generally speaking, adapters are used to link two different technologies, and it's not as, as common anymore in the modem area, but we still see a fair amount of antenna adapters and other products used by some people. 
Finally, expansion cards allow the basic modem to add additional capability for when it's needed. So this way a customer may have, for instance, 10 modems that are out in the field that don't require an expansion card, but perhaps one or two have special needs that they can simply use the same modem and add on the additional functionality afterwards. And that can be anything from additional ports to input output functionality to extra onboard storage. Without a good antenna, a cellular modem is just an expensive paperweight. Antennas are just like the tires on your car. They're the only thing touching the road, or in this case, the cellular network. To me, the, uh, the goal should be to use the best one you can afford for your deployment. To start with, a cellular antenna is needed. Sometimes the antennas may be built in in some modems, and in other cases they may come in the box. However, using a high gain antenna definitely maximizes the return of your solution, will result in less downtime, tends to last longer in the field, and always will provide better network coverage. If you're using Wi-Fi, you'll also need a Wi-Fi antenna, and like, like with the cellular antenna, sometimes they're built in or in the box. However, almost more than cellular technology, signal strength plays a huge role uh, in a Wi-Fi network's throughput speed. Just try going into your attic if your Wi-Fi router is down in your basement. Let me know how the throughput happens at that point. Using a higher gain antenna is often worth its weight in gold for many applications. As you mentioned before, a lot of times private radio networks are used in conjunction with cellular modem and they will also require an antenna. Quick, how many times do you have to stand out on your balcony on one foot leaning over just to make a phone call because there's bad coverage in your area? Adding an area booster, which will boost the signal for a particular amount of square feet, will provide not only better signal strength with your smartphone, but also for any modems that might be on site as well. Perhaps you're deploying in an extremely remote area and you're only deploying the modem itself. One way to boost signal is to use what's referred to as an inline booster, which happens to go directly into the modem itself. This will provide maximum cellular signal specifically for your modem. Finally, whether you're using an area booster or an inline booster, it definitely makes sense to have a boosted antenna to provide a better overall solution. How many times you've been at the airport, your phone's at 12%, you walk over, and everybody else has plugged in their phone into the available outlets. It's definitely frustrating, although it is getting better at some airports. The same can be true when it comes to cellular solutions, although in this case, it isn't because of people using the ports, it's because there simply isn't an outlet available anywhere. In this case, solar may be a good option as opposed to trenching a line, which is overly expensive and sometimes can be time delaying. If your solution is being permanently mounted, such as in the case of a permanent road sign, the permanent mount solutions will allow 7x24 power, uh, even when situations where there might be less light, like in the winter in some northern areas. Perhaps you have a festival, concert, or something that only needs power for a few weeks or even a few days. Temporary solutions are ideal because they actually provide uh, both a battery and a solar option uh, as a main connectivity for your modem. Finally, portable options are ideal when you just need to throw the power into the back of the truck with you. This could be things like mining, forestry, disaster recovery. What you get is an industrial power supply in a box, which can be charged by your car, by an available outlet if there is one, or in some cases, the sun if it's a solar mounted option. Modems have gotten much simpler to install over the years, and in many cases can be installed by the customer themselves. However, in some cases, a more specialized approach is needed. This could be for anything from an extra long cable run that needs to be done, perhaps the modem needs some integration services, uh, or perhaps there's such things as a power booster being used. On-site installation may be ideal for customers who either lack the expertise or the time, or maybe the rollout is in, is in such a wide geographical area they simply don't have enough resources to get out there. As well, many times the modem is used uh, by itself as a standalone router, and they're quite good at doing that. However, many customers, especially on the corporate side, have expensive corporate grade routers, which need, the modem needs to be integrated with. If that's the case, they may need to have integration with key systems done, such as a Cisco router or a Juniper one. Finally, uh, the flexibility of modem placement and the gain for many cellular antennas means that sometimes signal enhancement solutions have to be used. And this could be anything from uh, an area boost, uh, as I mentioned before previously, as well as to an inline booster. For many customers, they simply want to farm out this work for better expertise and for time reasons. 
Let's face it, IT departments weren't exactly underworked a few years ago, and with the introduction of smartphones and tablets, IoT solutions will simply make them be stretched even thinner. Although I'm quite certain that your technical IT teams are capable of setting up a modem, it may make sense for them to farm out some of this work so that they can focus more on their core projects and initiatives. Out of the box, modems are ideal for providing real-time, reliable IP-based communications. However, many customers may benefit from the extra flexibility that can be gained through loading on custom scripts onto the modem. Without a SIM card, modems are just shiny paperweights. SIM installation services ensure that the required settings are on the SIM card, as well as the device is able to connect to the site and network right away. This will often make your deployments go much quicker and smoother. Does every customer need an IO or an expansion card? No, but for those who do, it definitely provides extra flexibility for deployments that may need it. In many cases, card installation services will just make sure it works right out of the box for the customer. Finally, I'm quite certain that most customers, if they wanted to, could have the capability to do all the solution kitting that's required. However, for others, they simply don't have the time or even the space uh, to get all the work done in one location. Our kitting services, as long as, well as your own, could definitely make sure that everything that needs to get to each site gets there. As the demand for IoT grows, so do the complexity of some of the networks. Things like network integration, security, and software compatibility are vital to making sure that maximum return on investment is gained for your IoT solutions. Although modems are finished goods, some other parts of the solution might need to be built. Novatech often works with partners to offer hardware design services to help finish the solution if they're required. At one point, IoT solutions were not part of the standard corporate IT structure. That's not the case anymore. IT needs to be able to support, update, and integrate IoT into their overall network design. Novatech can help ease this by offering some of our integration services to help things work a little quicker. In some cases, specialized IP and other settings are required to ensure that a solution meets all needs, including the very stringent security requirements that most customers have. Ask us about some of our system design and engineering offers. Although no one likes to admit it, things can break in the field. This is especially true when considering some of the incredibly harsh environments that many IoT solutions are deployed in. As a way to protect against this, many customers are looking for extended warranty offers to protect their investment, especially in the case of a really long life asset out in the field. Whether it is a modem, one of our accessories, or an add-on radio and RFID box, extending the warranty may make sense for your deployment. In this world, cash is really king. For some businesses, it may make sense to purchase equipment outright. However, for other businesses, a financing option might make more sense as it frees up cash for other projects. This is especially true if your revenue tends to be more on a recurring base, basis, or if you have access to OPEX dollars much easier than CAPEX ones. Short-term financing is just like it sounds. The terms can be as, as long as one year, and this may be ideal for your company if you're going to be in a better position a few months later, or if you have a lot of immediate expenses to launch a project. For some, a longer term financing model, such as up to three years, may make better sense as it frees up cash flow now, and it might allow you to better align the costs with your business needs and goals. Finally, for assets that have a very long life in the field, perhaps a decade or more, like a meter or a traffic light or something like that, you might be concerned about how you're gonna deal with future generations of cellular networks, as well as about the ongoing maintenance and support of the devices. In this case, a long-term evergreening program might make a lot of sense for your company. As I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, things do break in the field. In many cases, it might not actually be the hardware itself, but it might be a setting or a connection that's been changed, which means that things can often be brought back online remotely. While many companies have all their required components to handle all of this work to maintain devices themselves, many may opt to look for someone else to do it. Perhaps it's a lack of resources or perhaps it's a lack of expertise. It could also be the assets are simply deployed in areas they don't have ready access to. Modems really are incredible devices in that they allow a tremendous amount of monitoring to be done over the air. However, you might not want to have people focused on this activity and it might make sense for you to outsource some of your remote monitoring to somebody else. 
If there is an issue with the modem, many times, as I mentioned, it can be fixed over the air, and this will prevent unwanted downtime and outages. We definitely look, we'll look forward to offering you some troubleshooting solutions as well as some tools to be able to, to actually look at these modems without having to go out and physically touch them. However, sometimes, even though the power of over the air is extreme, somebody does have to go out and fix a modem. Perhaps some bored teenager has managed to get a hold of your modem and unscrew the antenna cable, as an example. In this case, an on-site service of a brake fix nature would definitely help to, you to focus on your business. As functional as cellular modems are, they're not very functional without a live cellular connection themselves from one of the cellular carriers. Adding on the site service, cell service is not difficult itself. However, IoT services have become much more demanding than ever before, and often they require specialized service or knowledge to be able to achieve maximum value. As it sounds, ongoing data service is simply your monthly allotment of data that each device uses. In some cases, it can be pooled or shared among many or thousands of devices even. When you're deploying devices in a corporate environment, it is obviously vital to protect the integrity of the data that's being transmitted. For some, specialized IP addressing, such as static IPs and private IPs and VPN tunnels, increase the security level to satisfy even the most stringent security requirements. When your devices roam outside of your native country, or in some cases they're being deployed there in the first place, you might need to engage international data service plans from different carriers to ensure that you have service when and where you need it. Finally, when you have hundreds, thousands, or in some cases, millions of SIMs to manage, there's almost no way that a single person could do it without an advanced tool. And these tools are often offered by the carriers themselves or by some third parties. In terms of device management, the idea, as I mentioned, is to keep track of the device when it's out in the field. Uh, OTA monitoring is just like it sounds watching the device to make sure it's up, making sure it has uh, all the correct uh, throughputs it's supposed to have, noticing what the signal strength might be, things like that. There are some great tools that are provided by the manufacturers, and but it might be a service you might wanna look uh, to have farmed out yourself. Quick, how many times have you found that you have four devices in your house, like smartphones or iPhones, and they're all on different settings or versions of operating system? Now imagine doing that across millions of devices. It can be quite difficult to manage that, uh, to make sure they're all at the same settings or all reporting at the same time, items like that. And device management services will definitely help out that way. Finally, in some cases, you might never update the firmware or the software on board a modem because it's kind of the, if it ain't broken, don't fix it kind of mentality. However, in some cases, such as in uh, financial transactions for some of the compliance, you may have to change the software on board the modem as often as once a month. If you have two modems sitting next to you, it's probably not a major task. If you have thousands of modems, often thousands of miles apart, it can be a, lot, a difficult task to say the least. And that's where over-the-air update software helps to manage that for you. Cellular modems provide a great platform to enable remote communication from a site. Locally at the site, it may also make sense to gather information that can be transmitted across that cellular connection. I think most of us understand what GPS tracking is. You know, this is how we get where we're going with Google Maps and Apple Maps and stuff like that. And it is definitely ubiquitous in our day-to-day -day lives. Modems are a great conduit, whether it be the actual modem themselves or some kind of an add-on, to provide the location of a person or thing and to transmit it back to your office. I think we're all familiar, as I mentioned, with barcode services, and RFID services do take it to the next level. However, in some cases, there might be a lot of moving parts to it, and quite simply, companies don't have the expertise to do it all. They could be looking for more of a turnkey RFID offering on a hosted basis. Finally, getting information back from the field about an asset can be vital to your business, and it can be such as knowing the temperature, the location, or the runtime of a device. This can often be the difference between keeping a customer happy and losing a customer. Device monitoring solutions allows you to do that, whether it be by sensor-based, which we're going to talk about on the next slide, or by actually monitoring the health of a device itself. As promised, this slide talks about sensor-based monitoring. The world of IT is based on information, and sensors are a huge part of that. Sensors are in all aspects of our life, from our home to our office and in the car on the drive between. All of the data in the world 
is not going to be used properly if it's not in a format that's actually usable for people to get a quick glance for what they need. Data integration services puts that data into the programs and formats that your people need it to be able to be effective. Let's face it, good or bad, our lives are in the cloud. Facebook, our banking, even all of our files sometimes. Cloud-based monitoring simply takes that to the next level by offering flexibility to use multiple devices to access your data from all over the world from your IoT solutions. As I've said before, stuff does break. When you come to rely on data from the field, even the slightest downtime can be costly. IoT sensor-based break-fix services can help to keep your devices online and to bring them online back, back faster. There's an old expression, do what you do best. In some cases, it might make sense to farm out an, the entire turnkey solution when it comes to sensor-based monitoring. This will allow you to focus on your business and not worrying about the, how the data is gathered. For our last slide, in order to manage the experience that customers have and to better manage their business day to day, many customers have deployed CRM and ERP solutions such as SAP and Oracle and other products. In some cases, these solutions are cloud-based and in others, they may be hosted by the customer themselves. Since IoT data is very valuable to the company, it makes sense to have this data integrated so that all the required departments can utilize it regularly and efficiently. To simplify the integration of data into commonly used platforms, many customers use integration platforms, sometimes cloud-based, to help speed up the integration process. However, although they are streamlined a little bit with these, some of these platforms, there might still be and often is some custom work that needs to be done to get the information into the required systems in a format that you require. Many customers as such will use integration services from third-party companies uh, to assist this activity. Finally, in some cases for smaller companies, they might be looking for a complete turnkey solution that's cloud-based to house all their IoT data. We hope you got a lot of information from this webinar. We look forward to having you for future webinars. Thanks, bye now.